Greetings, I am your host, Glenn Alex, and you are watching The Glenn Alex Show, live on the Bold Brave TV network. Each episode of The Glenn Alex Show focuses on a different aspect of health because you are a whole person and all of you matters. And without total health, it really doesn't matter. And I am on a mission to help you be joyful, connected, confident, and complete the life experience we call wealth, W-E-L-L-T-H, which is health plus other riches. And just think about it for a second. If more people on this planet were living in total health or even in pursuit of it, there would be no isms. There would be no wars. There would be safety and love for all of us. So I, I hope that sinks in and you join us on this path for total health. And this episode is, um, I'm excited about it. I, I think it, it'll be fun. It is about clearing your space. So please help me welcome Connie Ellefson, author of Clear the Space, Feel the Rush, to The Glenn Alex Show. Hi, Connie. Hi, Glenn. Thank you for How, having me. Oh, you are so welcome. Thank you for making time. You're doing good today? Yes, it's great. Okay. Great. Okay. How about you take a minute and just tell us who you are and what you do? Well, I'm Connie Ellefson and I'm a civil engineer and a writer. I've always been interested in energy conservation and the, the latest book I wrote is about conserving your own energy by decluttering stuff that drags you down. Okay. And I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that was that was all I had for the moment. Okay. <laughs> okay. So so tell us how you went from engineering to decluttering. Well, I I'm still doing engineering, but now I do it at home instead of at an office. Okay. I was I was laid off four times in six years after 9-11 in the mm. following few years. So I thought it might be time for a new career. And I realized that I enjoyed tidying up my desk and putting everything away when a project was done, even more than the work, a lot more. So I thought I would try professional organizing. I'd also grown up moving every six months to a year when I was a child with my dad's work. So I learned to travel light. But then when I grew up and had my own family, we, we moved at one point at just five years after I left college with everything I owned in my car. We moved and it took me and five big guys four and a half hours to load the giant moving van. Wow. So I'm like, what happened? <laughs> and, and I'd read these organizing books and they'd say, do this, this, and this. And I'd do all their steps. I'd be all excited. But then I'd always stop before I finished the project. So eventually I realized there's not just your stuff clutter. There's things going on in your mind. Mm -hmm. mental and emotional clutter that slows you down. And in fact, it's probably much bigger than the clutter. We just approach the stuff because we could see it easily. It looks like it's the culprit, but it might be something else. Okay, very interesting. And how long have you been a professional organizer? Since 2008. Off 2008. And on, yeah. Oh, long time. Okay. Yeah. Now, before we jump into anything, can you just define clutter? Because what I consider clutter, other people might consider decoration. Exactly. Yep. That's what one thing I learned early on when I was working with clients, I used to have this decorating book that would have all different styles from extreme minimalism to extreme decoration. And I'd say, look through this and see what appeals to you, which which of these interiors looks like your style, because I didn't want to impose my style on them. And you're exactly right. What one person calls clutter is completely different from what another person does. We also have no idea why people hold on to certain things and why they, you know, why they keep other things and value them. So my, my catchphrase on my card, my business card was non-judgmental organizing and decluttering. So <laughs> clutter is whatever holds you back from doing the things you'd really like to do. It could be emotional clutter. I, I also talk in my book about physical clutter. And I can, I can say more about that, but um, if your body is sluggish because you're not eating very well, or you've maybe haven't gotten enough exercise lately, then it makes it really hard to, to approach your decluttering project of your stuff. I think okay. in a way, we all want to, we want to get our environment pared down. So it's kind of about the stuff, but we can go at it from different directions. 
we can start with okay. physical decluttering or emotional. Okay. Well, for, for now, how, let's focus on the environment, the immediate environment, someone's home, someone's office. Um, just to keep it simple, because if we do bring in too many yeah. elements at one time, people get lost or they get distracted. Yeah, exactly. Um, so in, in terms of the immediate environment, um, yeah. Are you saying yeah. that clutter is? Uh, are you saying that clutter is um, specific to the individual? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And I've, I've heard it said that when you're completely organized, the best you could be, then you don't have to move more than one item to get to something that you want. That that <laughs> might be hard. So, okay. If you look at it that way, then a lot of us have way more stuff than it's really practical to get organized. And um, so that's just a goal to work towards. The feng shui people say when you're done with your organizing and your, your downsizing, your decluttering, you should leave maybe a quarter to a third of the space open, whether it's on a shelf or in a closet. And that leaves room for more good things to come into your life. They may not be tangible. They might just be more adventure or more love or whatever but make that a goal too, to leave some open space. Okay, okay. I, I like that, enough space to only have to move one thing to get to what you want. Right. That's pretty well, that's simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting challenge. And it, yes. it ties into how much time we spend. They, they estimate that Americans may spend 55 minutes a day looking for stuff that they, they can't find or that's like six hours a week. And that you think, well, that sounds like, that sounds like over overdoing it. But if you think about, well, I need to change out the batteries in the, in the smoke detector, but I have to get the ladder and there's a bunch of stuff in front of the ladder and maybe mm -hmm. I'll just do it later. And you go through that five or six times during the day because you keep thinking, yeah, I do, I need to change those batteries or whatever. So it's all the time you think, that you spend uh, resisting it too. Resisting you, know, to do that thing. you know what, that, that's really interesting because six hours is big. I know. As, especially these days when life is so fast paced and I, I have a lot of clients who say, I don't have time. Well, if they're spending time going through clutter <laughs> instead of getting rid of clutter, then uh -huh. that explains a lot of the time consumption. Exactly. Yes, I know one of our favorite authors in organizing, Miss Marie Kondo, says, you'll probably have to get rid of 60 to 90% of your stuff. And that seems difficult for most of us, but it does, it does uh, put it into perspective when you think about only having to few, move a few items around in your environment versus dozens every day. And um, I just, it's... When I work with somebody, I don't I don't focus on the piles of stuff right away. I, I focus on how they want to spend their time in their homes or out of their homes if they just want to have like army barracks minimalism in their house so that, that they're free to go on adventures whenever they want. They don't have to feel like, oh, I need to get to stuff back at the house. So that stuff is holding okay. you back from the okay. life that you want. Okay, so okay. I use that. I say your dreams will pull you forward faster than you should do this. So have, just having having a goal in front of you for how you'd like to spend your time. If you have a favorite hobby that takes a dedicated space, you could set things up so you can get to that hobby easily. And if you think about that six hours and you get everything decluttered in your, in your whole house, get your whole house organized, it may take several months or whatever to do all that, then how would you spend that six hours? if you had it all at once because you've organized everything. And that's, that's a great that's question. A huge chunk of time for anybody to have free during the week. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's big. Now mm -hmm. I find it interesting um, that you mentioned feng shui because mm -hmm. I came across feng shui a long time ago, which um, helped me start organizing my space and only having the things that are aesthetically pleasing. When I look at them, I welcome them. I experience joy, warmth, love, etc. Anything that, you know, those, those sharp corners that I run into or these piles over here that I just go, Ugh, 
I, I, I got, I try to get rid of. So mm -hmm. I, feng shui was my introduction to, to clearing the space um, a, a right. long time ago. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, we, they talk about the energy that's stuck in like all the feng shui principles are around keeping energy moving around your space and your home and where, or even your office. So it's what, what allows you to be flexible and free flowing yourself. I realized as I was finishing up this book, you know, that buzz you get when you declutter a closet or even yes. a drawer or something, it's just like, you feel kind of exhilarated. Yes. That's, that's endorphins going through your body. So I like to say that when you clear the space, the feng shui energy that's in your, in your environment is also brought up in your body. So that's what okay. makes you feel so good. Okay. And is that the brush you mentioned? The, the rush. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. The rush okay. is the, is a big part of my book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I absolutely find that when I clean out a closet and get rid of stuff that I don't use, it, it does. I feel lighter mm -hmm. in my oh, person. Yeah. yeah, it's great. And the same thing happens when you, I'm sure you've heard that if someone goes for a walk or a run for half an hour, they start feeling kind of buzzed a little bit. That's the same thing. It's endorphins. Okay. It may be also a combination of dopamine, serotonin, and endorphins, but I just call it endorphins to keep it simple. And there, that's the same chemical that's released when you eat some spicy food and your brain thinks, oh, she's getting burned. I better give some painkilling. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, is that why I like spicy food so much? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. A few minutes later, you're going, well, that's some good chili. <laughs> so my spicy food is making me high is what you're saying <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> all right that's that's a high i love i love yes. okay all right well this seems like a good place to stop so we'll we'll stop here for a quick break okay. and when uh, connie and i come back we will have more on decluttering and clearing the space i'm glenn alex and you are watching the glenn alex show live on the bold brave tv network so stay tuned and we'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to EasySense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's EasySense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We are back. I'm Glenn Alex, and this is The Glenn Alex Show, live on the Bold Brave TV Network. Here with Connie Ellison, author of Clear the Space, Feel the Rush, discussing how letting go of things that hold you back can enhance your life. Welcome back, Connie. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Okay. You're welcome. Now, in your work, 
is there one or two reasons, main reasons um, that people hold on to stuff? There's, there's as many reasons as there are people, but I tried okay. to, I tried to, in my book, I listed eight or nine or something, you know, different motivations that people have for holding on to stuff and then other motivations that might talk you into letting go of them. So yeah, each person is unique. And okay. uh, for me, it was, I'm more like the opposite where I was reluctant to have new things come in my life because I spent so many times moving that I, um, I didn't, I was always thinking about the next move. So I was reluctant to have things come in, but somebody else may feel super strong to a person that gave them this item, even, even if that person has already died. So they don't want to let go because they're afraid they'll lose the memory of that person if they let go of the item. Okay. Or most of us have some kind of fear of the future, such as, what if I can't afford to buy that thing again? I know it's taking up space in my house, but what if I need it in the future? So that's all about fear. And okay. then it, grief is, is a thing too, where again, you're holding on to things that somebody gave you that you, you treasure that person, but maybe not the item so much. Okay. So sentimental reasons. Yes. Fear. Um, mm -hmm. Just part of the grief process are some reasons that people hold on to stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you find that some people hold on to stuff because they think it, it, it's an indication of their self-worth? Yes, exactly. Especially if it's something that's cost a lot of money. And I mean, there's another, there's another thing right there is embarrassment. I spent all this money on that thing. And even if it doesn't really serve me, I, I can't give it away because that, okay. that means that I'm, I've been stupid. <laughs> okay. Made, made a mistake. Okay. So for those people, I say, well, maybe better to pass it along to someone that can use it. And then you're not reminded of your bad choice. Right. Well, so how do you, how do you get uh, your clients to see that there is a mental and emotional component to holding on to stuff? Because a lot of people that I deal with will just say, oh, because I like it mm -hmm. or because it looks nice there when it's this deeper reason. Yeah, like I said, it's 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 unique to each person, but I I keep reminding them of their dream of how they want to spend their time and asking them if this particular thing is going to move that forward or if it's just going to stand in the way. And I I like to have a couple of couple of things that really sharpen your focus about what you love, which is one scenario is what if you were you were faced with the idea that you had to leave your home in an hour because the fire, the fire was coming or the flood or whatever. You don't have to leave this minute, but you got an hour. Which items would you take and which would you leave behind? And that really crystallizes what you value the most in your household or your office. So when you, when you put aside, if you take, say you have a, a set of books, maybe there's 10 or 20 books. You say, I'm going to pick out my 10 favorites from this 20 set of books. And you put them on one side and then you put all the other ones that weren't quite your favorite on the other side. Then it's super easy to see what you do treasure. And then the other stuff you say, eh, yeah, I think maybe I could let it go. Okay. At least to the point of boxing it up where you don't see it for six months. And then if you haven't missed it in a six months or a year or whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with, some people need to think about it much longer than just six months. But if you haven't, you know, brought it out or even thought about it, then you could go ahead and donate it at that point. But okay. anything that helps you crystallize exactly what you do love and what you don't. I had an interesting experience this last summer. My family went out to Oregon. I live in Colorado. And we, we shopped at a cute store and one of the women that was along got this gorgeous hat. It was a, like a blue straw hat, but it was just such a nice shape and it, everybody that tried it on looked good in it. <laughs> and I, I thought about my hats at home. I have four or five, I don't have that many, but some I've kept around for literally decades and never worn because I think, well, that would make a good gardening hat or something. But I could see just putting that one hat on one side 
and all my other substandard hats on the other side and saying, you're out of here. Okay. <laughs> because that one was so spectacular compared to the ones that were just sort of okay, that it made it super easy to, to think about only having that one. And okay. It would, filled, okay. it would have filled all the purposes that I use hats for anyway. Right. Right. Well, I think that's a really good, um, exercise is to mm -hmm. what would you take if you only had an hour to leave home right i and i'm running through my mind of what i would take um and it's a pretty short list <laughs> yeah yeah it's easy, it's it's easy to figure out what you really love another another way to do that that's maybe even more fun is what if you won the lottery but for some reason you had to stay in the house that you're in right now which of the things that you have right now would you keep and which would you give away? Because you know very well that you can afford to buy a new one. So oh. that's just a more fun way to do it. Okay. Both fun, but that's, that's even more fun. <laughs> well, yeah, fantasizing about winning the lottery can be fun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. And, and um, how do you, uh, other than those two, two examples, those two activity examples you just gave, how quickly do people come to um, moving through the difficulty of letting go? Sometimes it helps a lot to have someone to talk to about these items and reminisce about them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you've everyone's heard you start with the things that are least that have the least sentimental value to you. It might be really easy to go through a junk drawer or something and you'd save your photographs, your family photographs for the last or your clothes or whatever, whatever you treasure the most, that would be the thing that you would do last. But again, if someone, it may be easy to do it with a family member or it may be easier to do it with a friend or, an, or a professional organizer, somebody that's outside the family, because families tend to say, now, mom, really, why, why did you do this for 40 years? Why? And somebody that's outside, they're like, <clears throat> I don't care about it at all. I'm just here to help you. So process it. And what most people find, certainly I do, is it starts out really slow. <laughs> it's hard to get over that first hurdle. Yes. And then, and then you start feeling the rush and it starts to feel so good that you just accelerate faster okay. and faster. So it becomes easier and it's your life already feels a little bit better when you first when you you know just give away that first bag full of donations or whatever mm -hmm. it feels it feels awesome i'm really big into energy conservation i two of my other books that i wrote were about low water landscaping zero scape so i'm just i've always been careful about energy so i like to say if i have something that i kind of like but it's been on the shelf for five years and i've never used it all the energy that went into producing that item is just stuck and it's wasted basically because I'm not used in the thing. And I donate it to a charity shop and someone else takes it home and they put it to use. Then voila, all that energy is reborn. Yes. And, well, and that's a great, and that's a great option for getting rid of stuff is to donate it instead mm -hmm. of just throw it away. I mean, if it's tattered and torn, probably throwing it away is best. Yet right. there's that option because there are other people who could use it. So I do have another question. Uh, in addition to the mental and emotional benefits of decluttering, what about the actual tangible benefits of decluttering from uh, what are some of the things that stuff attracts in the physical environment like dust that could be problematic? Yes. Well, it's it's easy to see the extreme with someone who does hoarding. They may have mice or, or other pests running through their their um, collection. Sorry, I asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to know. You didn't want to know. And <laughs> it's, I mean, you don't have to be a hoarder to have mice around. I live next to a green belt, so it's been kind of an interesting challenge. But I learned that uh, if there's little, there's electronic repellents that you just plug into an outlet and they put, so you, you don't hear the sound, but the mice do, and they stay away. They stay out of the area. Okay. But those things don't work if they're blocked by things, if they're blocked by furniture or boxes or stuff. So that that's a 
huge motivation to keep all that area cleared. Okay. And yeah, dust and mold and all kinds of things can can grow if you if you're keeping around that don't get moved or cleaned regularly. Yes, but, yes, and, and I find yeah. that I, I find that when I'm cleaning out a, a space that I haven't been in or or dealt with for a while, that I need to wear a mask because uh -huh. the dust will affect my sinuses, which yeah. Will, make me not feel well. And I don't, I don't like that. So I, 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 I can just see that the stuff just sitting there mm -hmm. is attracting all of this stuff that's bad for our physical health, right. let alone exactly. the mental and emotional part. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a, okay. that's a great motivation because it's also much harder to clean when you have a lot of extra detritus that you're not using that's sitting there stagnantly, as you say. Um, it's much, much easier for it to get dusty. Yeah. So yeah. that's another, that's another motivator I like to use. Okay. Okay. And can, can you think of one other motivator or benefit of decluttering? Well, it re reduces stress. And one of the interesting things that I noticed when I was doing research for my book is there was a study at UCLA that determined that women and older teenage, no women are much more normally much more bothered by clutter than men or older teenagers. <laughs> they the those groups tend to be okay with lots of things in their visual field or they just like to see their belongings around them. Okay. I actually talked to a man in the post office one day. I just struck up a conversation and I told him about my book and he said, "Well, I kind of like clutter." So, I mean, many people in many households, hundreds of thousands of households have already learned what UCLA knows. But the cool thing about it is when you when you hear about it in a study, you say, oh, they're not just being annoying. <laughs> it, it's a physical, a physiological fact. So oh, okay. that, that just helps with your ability to, you know, work with your family and, and try to come to a compromise. Uh, like we'll keep the living room tidy at the end of the day, but you can do whatever you like in your private in your room. So it's it's good for your mental health and your negotiation skills, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that is interesting because I, I, I did not know that I, I was aware that men tend to be and uh, forgive me for overgeneralizing men tend to be more visual. Um, yeah. But I didn't apply it to stuff. It's about the the way that men can focus in on something just with a real narrow focus and i'm sure you've heard that the connection between the right and left half of the brain for men is mm -hmm. not as large as, as it is for women for women it's larger so they they can take in stuff all around them and be thinking about a song and be they can they can multitask i'm not gonna yes. <laughs> i'm not gonna yes. say they can't because we're doing it all the time but men, they're much better at focusing. So even if they're bothered by the clutter, if they're focused on watching a show or reading a book or whatever, they're not seeing it. Okay. They're not, they're not aware of it. So I think that's, I think that fits into the whole situation, the whole paradigm. And we need both kinds of people. We need people that can focus and we need people that can be aware on a broad, broad spectrum. Absolutely. So they're both valuable. Okay, absolutely. And that's a great segue into viewers' questions that we'll get into in the next segment. But for now, it's time to take another quick break. So when Connie and I return, we will tackle viewer questions about decluttering. So this is Glenn Alex, and you're watching The Glenn Alex Show live on the Bold Brave TV network. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Did you know? beliefs create your entire reality but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating belief shifter and life coach shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them often in a single session like it was almost instant like i had relief right away creating better health relationships careers and finances let shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness definitely something's happening uh it's like a, a flow inside you know it feels good whether in person or online shiraz provides personal coaching belief shifting visit shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429 
Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back. I'm your host, Glenn Alex, and you are watching The Glenn Alex Show, live on the Bold Brave TV network. I'm here having a fun conversation with Connie Ellison, author of Clear the Space, Feel the Rush, talking about decluttering. And we ended the previous segment with um, Connie sharing a UCLA study about men being more visual and not being as bothered by clutter as women. So Connie, come on back because we have questions from viewers. And one of the questions is, I think, related to that. So um, the question is, um, how to help her husband who uh, accumulated stuff before they were married, uh, like duplicate tools, um, books about boxes full of instruction manuals and old clothes that he can no longer fit. How can mm -hmm. she help him let go? Yeah, that's, that's challenging. And the thing is that we have to remember what we consider clutter, they may not. And for men, I believe when they have lots of tools, they like they like to keep all of them. <laughs> so for you, you might you might love books. So you don't you don't need to downsize your books if you if you adore every one of them. But perhaps you could make a deal with him that you'll go through some of the old manuals, especially stuff that he doesn't have anymore. Neither neither of you have the item anymore. Certainly, you could get rid of the manuals, and you could also probably get rid of the most of the manuals for stuff you do have since you could get them online, okay. but make a deal with, with, we'll leave your tools alone or we, if we, we can go through them if you want to. But um, if he's the kind of person that is a, has a soft heart for chari you know, charitable donations, he, he could think about donating some of those to Habitat for Humanity or mm. um, because they, they sell items and then they put them to use with, with building homes for people that don't have the money to have their own home. Great so idea. Something that appeals to his, to his sense of taking care of others is always great. But um, you can also do something like, we'll, we'll collect all the tools. And Marie Kondo is famous for this. We'll collect all the screwdrivers, for example, and we'll, we'll lay them out. And then we'll just, you can decide husband i'm not going to decide for you but okay do you really need 15 or could you just make <laughs> you with five or we'll put one all around everywhere in the house where we might want to have one handy and then okay. um, you know just just use your head and and always be kind okay okay and how about getting him to get rid of old clothes that he can no longer fit well i don't know if he's stubborn about that or not but i I guess, you know, it just depends on each person where they like having new clothes or not. I did meet a fellow once who was, I, I gave him some of my son's clothes and they were, they were just so boring. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I could get some more use out of those. Again, it's the same thing. It's focusing on what someone else could use that would really help them. And the kind of things that you don't like to spend time on, maybe you don't need six paint shirts because you never do any handyman stuff or whatever you oh know, but he can't he can't he can't fit these clothes though he so that means oh, he's not wearing them he's not using them at all at all so at all and he's and not willing to let go of them well that's one of the things he's he's been holding on to oh okay 
Okay. I guess that's, so, that's a matter of discussion because you need a lot more, a lot more information. Why is he holding on to these things? Okay. And does he have, does he have enough clothes in, in the current style or that do fit him that he enjoys? Okay. And in, each person is, like I said, an individual. So I'm sure if you just talk and listen, a lot of times we'll, we'll resist someone telling us, someone else telling you need to get rid of that stuff. But if you just listen to what their reasons are and and accept the reason and say, what about, would you like to spend your time not with those things or, you know, throw things out for discussion as opposed to just putting your foot down, okay. which okay. never works. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> great answer. Okay, now this one is, um, uh, this, this woman, uh, stored her late mother's things in her garage mm -hmm. with the uh, intent to go through them and discard things that she didn't want. Mm -hmm. um, she hasn't gotten there yet. So the things that right. she needs that are in the garage are behind the stuff, the mother stuff. So exactly. she wants to know how can she work on this in her spare time? Because she works, has a full life, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of extra time. So what are some tips for her? It, it sort of depends on how, <clears throat> how much she treasures those items. If it's, no, she wants to get rid of them. She just hasn't gone well, through the process of discarding them. Yeah. But I, I think at this point now it seems daunting because they've yeah. been there so long. Well, that's a, that's a nice, uh, nice place to, to hire a professional organizer because they can, okay. they can quickly help you or you may just give them some guidelines and say, if you find anything that's like a letter or some kind of a personal memento, save that. And if you don't, you know, whatever is, and you can give broad categories. I don't need any small lamps or furniture or anything. I don't need any clothes or, you know, whatever. They can help you process it much more quickly. Okay. Or you could get a you could get a friend to help you do it too. It's it's sometimes it's just a matter of having somebody else there to kind of hold your hand. And then there are services that will come and pick up everything that's left and they will donate whatever they can. They will, sometimes they have their own online stores so they can sell the stuff. They'll charge you a fee to take all this stuff away, whatever they can't recycle or donate or sell, they'll, they'll take to the dump. So okay. they're basically, they're, they're handling it all for you. Okay. And, okay. and it's, it's a huge, huge relief to have these people show up and say, do this, do that. <laughs> and okay. In terms of that, taking her own time to do that, it's it might be worth the cost to okay. have somebody else take it away for you. Okay, because that's her six hours. Yes, exactly. Okay. okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, so now this question is about downsizing. Um, mm -hmm. This this woman is retired. She's planning to downsize and move into a smaller home in the next two to three months, uh, where to start with personal memorabilia with her kids, grandkids, uh, mm -hmm. from her uh, profession, her career, her husband's career, where does she start? Mm -hmm. It, to some extent, it depends on whether she's retired or not. She is or retired. She's, okay. So <laughs> she could throw out all the stuff from her career. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, just, let me just give her permission to do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I I worked with a woman several several weeks, like once a week for a couple hours, with some paperwork and several boxes of paperwork that had been with her work, and we ended up recycling almost all of it. Each time we go through a box, most of it went into recycle. And finally, after a few weeks of this, I. I called her and I said, I noticed you haven't scheduled me for another another session. Did you, did you just decide to stop on it for, for a while? And she said, well, I realized we were throwing most of it away. So I figured I could do that myself. And okay. I said, yes, yeah, you go. Okay. She got it. And yes. There's one of the techniques I describe in my book is called tapping emotional freedom technique. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we discussed that before, but, um, you can, you can even tap on these things that are hard to let go of. And you could say things like, it's, it's really hard for me to let go of this. 
I, I somehow I feel ang anxious about it. And you, you keep describing for yes. four or five minutes what the bad side of it, like what's holding you back. And then you can switch over to something more positive. I know it's difficult, but I'm pretty sure I can handle it. I'm a very intelligent person. And I want to spend my retirement time doing fun things instead of looking at all this paper or all these mementos. Okay. Okay. And that's actually um, uh, very helpful because uh, my guest in January 2022 is an EFT expert and oh, she great. used it to overcome her own traumas and I uh -huh. started using it for my own stuff. So that's a great idea is to tap on it to help let go. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, okay. It's on everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, so one other question. Um, this woman, uh, she has a hard time letting go of cards, birthday cards. <laughs> anniversary cards, Mother's Day cards. She feels like she needs to hold on to them. <laughs> what would you say to her? Well, don't feel bad because I, I hold on to those things too. And and I think they don't pick up that much space in the overall scheme of things. I <laughs> I did have one, one of my relatives gave me the exact same card two birthdays in a row with ah. the same message on it. So I'm like, yeah, I think I can let go of one of these. <laughs> But sometimes I use them, especially holiday cards. I use them for decoration for packages. Okay. Like, uh, nice. That's a good idea. Put them to different uses. I ended up with some paintings that my mom and stepdad had done. And some of them are not quite good enough to frame. I can't donate them without framing them. So I decided I would cut them up into rectangles and use them for greeting cards so I could pass along just little pieces of the beauty that my mom and stepdad created without, you know, I'm, I still feel like I'm putting it to use okay. so that someone else can enjoy it. So she could get creative with using those cards for some decorative thing or, you know, make a, make piles of how many she's got from each person and maybe then just narrow down the, the size of the piles. I was going to say for the previous person that had mementos from families and stuff to do the same thing decide each person is going to have one shoe box or one you know yeah. an inch they're going to have two inches vertically that's all they get so okay. i'm going to i'm going to narrow it down to just that amount of space and oh. just figure out some way to make it fun for yourself and not feel like a terrible chore okay wow that's a that's a great idea that's pretty creative okay so one more question um the mother of a 10 year old, they have all of his toys still mm -hmm. Yeah, for 10 years. How can she let those go? Cause they're all attached to them. They're sentimental. The, the child is or the, or the mom. Oh, that's a good I, question. I, I don't know the distinction. Yeah, that's, that's another one. I mean, kids are really good about out of sight, out of mind. Unless okay. they're at the opposite end where they treasure every single little thing. But it's, let's just face it, it's a skill that you need to learn as you're growing up or you're just, your life is going to be. I heard this wonderful line recently from another author. She said, you need to help, get some help with moving that stuff if you're not getting it done yourself because your life is being hampered by inanimate objects. And I thought, <laughs> <laughs> that really, that really sums it up. <laughs> Inanimate objects. So okay. this, this child, unfortunately, or fortunately, he needs to learn how to let go of things too, just like we all do. So again, the same thing, pick out your favorites or think of somebody that you'd love to give it away to that, that it feels good or whatever. So it's not, maybe it's not going to be the same thing for each type of category but it's still a valuable skill to learn. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, thank you for those very poignant and good <laughs> and creative answers. I like them. I like them a lot. Now for all of those um, the uh, questions, for all of those questions, do you want to remind the viewers of, of how good it'll feel to let stuff go? Yes. Well, I, I spoke earlier about the exercise that you feel that the endorphin rush or yes. when you declutter, you definitely feel it. 
and then sometimes it looks like we just have a little bit of time left. So yeah, well, we'll we list can up get here back and then we can pick it up um, okay. in the next at the beginning of the next segment. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> wow. I'm Glenn Alex, and you're watching the Glenn Alex Show here on the Bold Brave TV Network. When we return, Connie and I will have more on decluttering, the benefits of decluttering. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live to Dare to Soar, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network, and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Welcome back. I'm your host, Glenn Alex, and you are watching The Glenn Alex Show, live on the Bold Brave TV network. I am here with Connie Ellison, having a really fun conversation about decluttering. And so, Connie, I, I wanna thank you for all of your wisdom and information. And tell us, what is the one nugget or takeaway you want viewers to have? To realize that the the decluttering, the endorphins you get from decluttering, whether it's your body, mind, or your emotions, that's you get a rush from de, you know getting rid of an emotional block. It's actually good for your immune system. I was fascinated by an experiment that Dr. Joe Dispenza did with a group of 120 people, where he asked them over the course of four days in a seminar to spend 30 minutes a day being happy, like putting themselves into a high emotional state. And at the beginning and end of the four days, he checked them for immunoglobulin A, which, which measures your immune system right now and how strong it is. It had gone up an average of 50% in four days from just being happy. Okay. And, and I'm like, that's endorphins, that's the rush. So the decluttering is a super easy way to improve your immunity. As talk about, you know, bringing your health full circle, the whole person, that's, that's a great way to do it. Okay. There's lots of other ways to do it, but that's that's a fun way and it benefits the rest of your life too. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you. Now, how can someone contact you if they want to work with you, want a consultation? Yes, I'm. my website is easy to remember. It's clearthespace.com, just like the title, C-L-E-A-R-T-H-E-S-P-A-C-E.com. I'm also available on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube and TikTok. I've been making a bunch of TikTok videos. That's my dream is to move more into video. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm getting there. Okay. And, um, yeah. It's pretty okay. easy. Okay. And where is your book available for purchase? It can be bought through the website at, if you'd like an autographed copy, or you can also buy it at any of the online bookstores or any of the physical bookstores. You could ask for one to be ordered for you. Okay, great. All right, everybody go for the autographed copy. That's always cool to have. Okay. 
Connie, thank you so much for, for making time to be here and for sharing your wisdom and, and just for this fun conversation. I, I really enjoyed it. Well, thank you so much, Glenn. It's been great. Oh, thank you. And happy holidays. Thank you. Okay. And thank you for joining us uh, for this episode of The Glenn Alex Show. I hope you find the information helpful and enhancing to your overall life experience. And what I want you to know is that many people I work with look outside of themselves for validation, for worth, for love, and fill their spaces with stuff, which can become stuff of loneliness, of depression, of anxiety because in actuality, self-worth comes from within and the stuff becomes problematic because it's a distraction from your personal truth. Life works from the inside out and your external life is a reflection of your internal experience. So the more stuff you have, then the more disconnected you can become from validation, from your awareness of your self-worth from authentic love. So declutter to enhance your mental, emotional, and overall health. And for more information on mental and emotional health, please visit glennalex.com and check out my award-winning book, Living in Total Health, which is a great gift for yourself and for your loved ones. And tune in to The Glenn Alex Show next week on the Bold Brave TV network for more information on health. And until next time, be well.